This video is going to be about how to convert um, arithmetic calculations into a symbolic representation of those calculations. So first let's just take a look at some arithmetic calculations. Suppose you have a wire cutter to snip a 24 inch piece of wire into two parts. One of the parts measures 8 inches. So we have this wire and whenever you can draw a picture of something, um, it's always a good idea to do that. And it starts out as a 24-inch piece of wire. So we have this wire that's 24 inches in length, and we're going to cut 8 inches of that off. So we're going to cut this 8-inch section off. And we want to first figure out what is the length of the second part. So this first part is 8 inches, and so what is remaining over here, and how do you do that calculation? Well, this whole wire was 24 inches, so we started out with 24 inches, and we removed from that, or took away from it, 8 inches. So we would subtract that, and 24 minus 8, um, I believe is 16, but I'm going to double check because I don't trust myself and it is 16 inches. And so this remaining piece is 16 inches and I'll just put that up there in red because that was our calculated figure. Now write down and describe in words the arithmetic operation you use to determine your answer. And so the arithmetic that we did was we subtracted 8 from 24. Now use a wire cutter and snip another 24 inch piece of wire into two parts. This time um, one of the parts measures 10 inches. So we're starting out with our 24 inch piece of wire again. And this time we're going to remove from that a 10 inch piece. what's the length of the second part. So we want to figure out what the length of this piece is. And so again, we're starting out with a total length of 24. If we remove from that 24 10 inches, then we're going to have 24 minus 10 or 14 inches. And now we're going to write down and describe in words the arithmetic operation we used to determine our answer there. And so we subtracted 10 from 24. Now we're going to look at the symbolic representation. Consider the situation in which 24 inch piece of wire is cut in two parts. Suppose you have no measuring device available, so you will denote the length of the first part by the symbol x, representing the variable length. So again, we have our wire, and it's 24 inches in length. And so we're going to cut from that some length, and we don't know how long it is, so we're going to use the letter x to represent it. Using problem 1 and 2 as a guide, represent the length of the second part symbolically in terms of x. So the total length was 24 inches, and we're removing from that a total length of x. So before, what we did was we took our total length and we subtracted the part that we removed, so we're going to do the same thing here. So that would be 24 minus x. What are reasonable replacement values for the variable x? So um, it is reasonable that we would replace the x with a 0 because that would be, represent not cutting the wire. And any value from 0 up to 24 would be reasonable. And any number in between.
including decimal or fractions um, would be okay in there. Now suppose we take these two parts of the snipped wire and bend each to form a square. Refer back to problem one in which one piece of wire measuring 8 inches was cut from the 24 inch piece of wire. Explain in words how you can use the known length of wire to determine the area of the first square and what is the area. So um, let me just move up a little bit and I'll draw a picture of what we're doing. So we're taking this 24 inch piece of wire and we're cutting that so this piece would be 8 inches and this piece would be 16 inches and we're going to take this piece which is 8 inches long and we're going to bend it into a square and then we're going to take this piece that's 16 inches long and we're going to bend it into a square so this square will be a little bit bigger and so this 8 inches is right going to be the perimeter or the measurement around this square so we know that the perimeter of the first one is 8 inches and the perimeter of the second is 16 inches and so the perimeter remember is the measurement around and so each side will have a length of, there are four sides to each of these, and so you would take this total length and divide it by four to figure out the side length. So that's going to be the first thing that we're going to need to do. Um, so we're explaining in words how we can use the known length of wire to determine the area of the first square. So we're going to divide eight by four. to get the square or the length of the sides of the square. So we have this square. Its perimeter is 8 inches and each side length has 8 divided by 4 or 2 inches in length and when you're calculating the area of a square remember the area of a square is equal to the sides squared or um, a side times a side and so now we want to square the length of a side. So that's describing in words what we would need to do. So now we want to write down the sequence of ar arithmetic operations you use to determine your answer in part A. So we would take 8 divided by 4. So that's what we did first. That gives us 2 and then we have to take that 2 and square it which gives us 4 so that would be 4 inches squared. Explain in words how to determine the area of the second square. So we're going to do the same thing. So we're going to take the um, length of the wire and divide it by 4. And that's the perimeter. and then we're going to square the result. Oops. So that's describing in words what we would do. Now write down the sequence of arithmetic operations you would use to determine the answer for part C. So the side or the perimeter or the length of wire is 16. We're going to divide that by 4 and 16 divided by 4 is 4 and then you take that answer and you have to square it and so that's going to be 16 inches squared. So it's a little bit weird because the perimeter and the area are the same um, and that's not typical that that would happen. But 
Now refer back to problem 3 in which one piece of wire cut from 24 inch piece measured x inches use problem 4b as a guide and to represent the area of the first square symbolically using x. So the first piece um, that we cut is the piece that we cut off and so that has a length of x and we want to divide that by 4 and then we would take that result when we're doing this symbolically now so the result is just going to be x divided by 4 and the next thing that we needed to do was to square that result and so it would be x divided by 4 squared. Similarly re represent the area of the second square symbolically using x and so symbolically the piece that we had left then was 24 minus x so that's the length of the other piece. We want to take that length which is our perimeter and divide it by 4 because the square has 4 sides so this is the length of one side of that square and then to find the area we would need to square that. Replace x by eight in your algebraic expressions in part a and b to calculate the areas of the two squares formed when a length of eight inches is cut from a 24 inch piece of wire and compare the results with the answers in problem four a and c. So we want to replace the x in the first one with eight and so I'll make the eight blue. And then we're going to divide that by four and square it and eight divided by four is two, so we get two squared, which is four. So four inches squared, and this is the same as the answer that we got in 4a. Do the same thing with um, our symbolic representation in part b, and so I'm just gonna write what I call the shell of this down, so that's 24 minus, I'm gonna replace the x with eight, so I'm gonna leave that blank for the moment, and then I'm just going to put an 8 in there in blue, re replacing this x with an 8, gives us this, and then this is being squared. And now 24 minus 8 is 16, and then divided by 4, and we're squaring it. 16 divided by 4 is 4, and 4 squared gives us 16 inches squared. And this is also the same as the result that we got in part 4c. Suppose now you have eight dimes and six quarters in a desk drawer. Explain how you can use this information to determine the total value of these counts um, and what is the value. So each dime is worth 10 cents. And so that's 0 0.1. Um, and then we would multiply this by 8 because we have 8 of them. And each quarter is worth 25 cents and so that's 0 0.25 and we want to multiply that by the number of quarters that we have and we have six quarters. Um, and to determine our total value then we're going to add these two together. Write down and describe in words the sequence of arithmetic operations you use to determine your answer. So we're going to take 0 0.1 times 8, the number of dimes that we have, and so that would be 0 0.8 or 80 cents. And then we're going to take 0 0.25 and we're going to multiply that by 6. And if you multiply that by 6, you should get 1.5. And then we need to add them together. And so 0 0.8 plus 1.5. We get 13 when we add that, so we carry over the 1, and so that would be $2.30.
So now suppose we have d dimes, oops, and q quarters in the desk drawer represent the total value of these coins symbolically in terms of d and q. So we're going to do exactly the same thing. We're going to take the value of each dime and multiply it by how many dimes we have. The value of a dime is, oops, I want to change that back to red, is 0 0.1. Here we knew how many dimes we had. We had eight of them, but now I don't know how many I have. I have d of them, and so, but I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to take the value times the number of dimes I have, and then we added to that how much we had in quarters. So this time it's 0.25. I'll put that in black. So 0 0.25 is the value of a quarter, and again this time here we knew we had six quarters, so we multiplied the value of the quarter by six. Now we're saying we don't know how many quarters we have, so we're going to use the um, letter Q to replace that, but still we want to do the same thing, so it's going to be 0.25Q. So this is the value of the number of dimes we have, and this is the value of the quarters, and we add those two together. Evaluate your algebraic expression in part C when there are 14 dimes and 21 quarters. So in black I'm going to write down the shell of this, so that's 0 0.1, and then I'm going to put an empty set of parentheses for the number of dimes I have, plus 0 0.25, and again an empty set of parentheses for the number of quarters that I have. And then in red I'll replace the D with the number of dimes, so that would be 14, and I'm going to replace the Q with the number of quarters I have, which is 21. And then we'll do this calculation. So 14 times 0.1 gives me 1.4 plus 0.25 times 21 gives me 5.25. And now I want to add those two together. I already have the 5.25 in my calculator, so I can just hit the plus key and then type in the 1.4. And we get 6.65. And so we would have a total of $6.65. Number 7a, suppose a rectangle has a length of 8 inches and a width of 5 inches. Determine its, d determine its perimeter and its area. So we have a rectangle. It has a length of 8 inches and a width of 5 inches. And remember the area of a rectangle is length times width. So the area of this rectangle would be 8 times 5, or 40 inches squared. That's supposed to be an IN. It looks like an M. There we go. If the length of the rectangle is represented by L and its width is represented by W, write an expression that represents its perimeter and its area. So the area we already wrote down, that was L times W, but the perimeter is the total distance around, oh, this one we were supposed to determine its perimeter too, sorry about that. So the perimeter is the distance around an object, and so we have 5 inches here and 8 inches here, so that's 5 plus 8, and then another 5 inches here and then another 8 inches here. And so we have um, 13 plus 13, or 26 inches, is the perimeter. Sorry about that. So we have a total of 2 of the lengths, so that would be 2 times L, and then we have 2 of the widths, so that's plus 2 times W. So these are the symbolic representations for the area and the perimeter of a rectangle. Suppose the length and the width are each increased by 3 inches. Determine the new length 
width, perimeter, and area of the expanded rectangle. So um, in our original rectangle, the length was 8, so we want to add 3 to that. And the width was 5, and we want to add 3 to that. So my new width will be 8, and my new length is going to be 11. And the perimeter, I have 8 plus a long top here now, it's 11 because we expanded it, plus another length of 8, plus another length of 11. And so we have 22 plus 16, or we have 19 and 19 as um, 38. And the area, again, is length times width. And so that would be 11 times 8, or 88. And the units on that then are inches squared. In part D, we want to represent the new length and width of the expanded rectangle in part C symbolically using the original dimensions L and W. So now I want to do this with letters instead of numbers. And so this is my length, and I'm expanding it by 3. And this is my width, and I'm also expanding that by 3. And so the area formula was length times width, but we want to use the new length and width and so instead of L and W, we're going to use L plus 3 and W plus 3. And the perimeter, so remember the perimeter of a rectangle is 2L plus 2W. We want to replace the L with L plus 3. And we want to replace the W with W plus 3. So this is our new width and our new length. All right, so um, we already did part E. Evaluate the expression that should be in part E for the dimensions of the original rectangle. How do they compare to results in part C? So if we replace the L with an 8 and the W with a 5, we'll get an area of 8 plus 3 times 8, or oops, sorry, that should be a 5. And let me write down the shell, because I think that that's easier to do that way, at least to see where the numbers are coming from. And so we're going to replace the length with 8 and the width with a 5. And so we get 11 times 8, or 88 inches squared. And then for the perimeter, we're going to have 2 times the quantity, and then a empty set of parentheses for the length, plus 3, and then plus 2 times an empty set of parentheses, plus 3. And again, we're replacing the length with 8 and the width with 5. So we have 2 times 11 plus 2 times 8. And so that's 22 plus 16, or 38 inches. Suppose the length and width of the original rectangle are doubled and tripled, respectively. Determine the new length, width, perimeter, and area of the expanded rectangle. So we'll do doubled here. And 
and let me just move this over slightly so that we can draw in our rectangles. And so now we're going to have 2L for a length and 2W for a width because we're doubling those or multiplying them by 2. And so our new length, we found that it's 2L. And I'm kind of jumping ahead of myself because we're supposed to be doing this with numbers first, but we'll just do it symbolically. And then the width is 2W. Then the area would be 2L times 2W, which would give us 4LW. So 2 times 2 is 4, and then L times W. And then the perimeter is 2, and then we're going to replace the length with 2L plus 2, and then we're going to replace the width with 2w. And so that gives us a perimeter of 4l plus 4w. Sorry, this is so squished. And then we want to do it for the sides being tripled. And so the new length is going to be 3L, and the new width is going to be 3W, and so then the area is going to be 3L times 3W, and so that would be 9LW. And then the perimeter is going to be 2 times 3L, plus 2 times 3w. And so that will give us 6l plus 6w. Represent the new length and width symbolically using the original dimensions l and w, so that was um, we already did it symbolically, so um, should have kind of done these in reverse order, but um, so for the being doubled, if we double the original um, length, which was 8, it would be 2 times 8 or 16. Oops. And if we double the original width, it would be 2 times 5, which is 10. And then the new area would be 16 times 10, which would be 160. And the new perimeter would be 2 times 16 plus 2 times 10. And that would be 32 plus 20, or 52 inches. And if we triple these, then we would have 3 times 8 as our new length, and 3 times 8 is 24, and 3 times 5, which is 15, that would be our new width. And then calculating the area and perimeter from that, so the area would be 24 times, whoops, times 15. And that one I want to do on my calculator. And we get 360, and that would be inches squared. And then the perimeter would be 2 times 24 plus 2 times 15. And that's 48 plus 30, which gives us 78 inches. Represent the new perimeter and area symbolically using the original dimensions W and L. Is your representation consistent with your answers to part G? 
So again, um, we already have done this. Um, the area was um, for doubling was 4LW. And the perimeter is 4L plus 4W. And this was for doubling. And for tripling, we got um, not area equals 9LW. And the perimeter is equal to 6L plus 6W. So the funny thing about when you double the length and width, um, the multiplication factor that gets changed for area is four times as much. And when you triple, it's going to be nine times the old area. And if we double each side, then this perimeter is twice the old perimeter. And here, um, it'll be three times the old perimeter. So just a interesting little fact that happens there with area and perimeter. Now we're back to um, a problem from the last section on college expenses um, from problem four. We purchased a meal ticket at the beginning of the semester for $150. The daily lunch special costs $4 in the college cafeteria. You want to be able to determine the balance on your meal ticket after you have purchased a given number of lunch specials. So identify the input and output variables in the meal ticket situation. So our input, this is what's going to affect um, the output. So the input always is the one that's affecting the output. And so the amount of money that we have left on our card depends on how many meals we've purchased. And so the input is going to be the number of um, daily specials. And the output is um, the total, our total balance, or our balance, you can say. Write a verbal description of the sequence of operations that you must perform on the input value to obtain the corresponding output value. So we're going to multiply the input variable, the number of daily lunch specials that we have, by four dollars. And subtract it from Um, subtract it from 150, our beginning balance. Translate this verbal rule description in part B to a symbolic expression using X to represent the input. So we started with $150 and we're going to subtract from that four times the number of daily lunch specials that we had X. So this will be a symbolic representation of the balance left on our card. Suppose you have purchased 16 lunch specials so far in the summer. Use the alg algebraic expression from part C to determine the remaining balance. So again, I'm going to write out the shell, 150 minus 4. And then instead of the x, I'm going to put a blank set of parentheses. And in that, I'm going to replace the number of lunch specials um, there. So we're going to put a 16 in where the x used to be. And so we have 150 minus, now I'm going to multiply 4 by 16, and we get 64. And then we want to take 150 minus 64, and that gives us $86 is what's remaining. And that um, finishes up our lecture. Let me know if you have any questions. Thank you.